Hey guys, everybody. So we're going to watch a video about um, this Clinton campaign manager getting uh, totally beat here by Chris Wallace in this little interview. Uh, if you want to put it that way, as if it were a fight, he gets beat. But the purpose of this video is to draw out and explain the tactics that this Clinton campaign manager is using to try to defend himself in this debate and to defend Hillary Clinton and uh, the statements that she made. So let's jump into this here and see what this guy does. See the tricks he uses. And I know all of them. I want to ask you about Secretary Clinton's reaction. Here's part of what she said on Friday night. If they're going to be sending uh, this kind of letter uh, that uh, is uh, only going originally to Republican members of the House, that they need to share whatever facts they claim to have with the American people. Robbie, why would she say something that is so flatly untrue? I have a copy here. It's not very long. It's the letter that Comey sent to Congress on the front page. It's got the eight Republican chairman of the committees. If you just turn it over, next page, you got the eight top Democrats on the committee. Why would she say that it was just sent to the Republicans when, in fact, it was sent to the Republicans and Democrats? You know, Chris, th this has been really overhyped. That's the first tactic. This, is, this has been overhyped. He's trying to diminish the entire situation and act like it doesn't even matter. So that, that's tactic number one, is pretending like the other people are making a bigger deal out of it than they should. And that, that's the start to their victim narrative. Uh, well, she said we it, I all, didn't. <laughs> we were all surprised by this letter. She looked at the front page, and as you just said yourself, on the front page of that memo, it lists those Republican chairs. She looked at the front page. As, you, as the facts are, though, yes, indeed, they are on the second page. What he's doing here is using a half-truth. He's, he's half-telling the truth. She looked at the front page. But because uh, it's very likely that she looked at the second page as well, he doesn't want to say that because then people would know that, you know, she did look at the second page from the very get-go, but she chose to ignore that anyways and pretend like it was only the information on the first page. That could be, that, that could not be, um, but it's highly suspect, and, and the tactic that he's using is clearly obvious. So, uh, using a half-truth. Oh, she looked at the first page, and now we're acknowledging. They, they, they always acknowledge, once they, but only once they've been caught, right? Only once they've been caught. They, they try to get away with the lie uh, until they get caught, and I, I think that is what actually happened here. And that's why he's using this tactic of the half-truth. She looked at the front page. Yeah, we know she did. Were the Democrats CC'd on, at the end of the letter? Absolutely. She looked at the front page of the letter. She is acknowledged. We all acknowledge this was sent to everybody. Again, what we're concerned and disturbed by is that Director Comey sent a letter saying, we have some information. Concerned and disturbed. This, this is what they're always trying to do. We're, we're concerned and disturbed. As if people that are, are coming after them have some sort of like mental illness and they're trying to savagely attack them. Oh, we're disturbed. This is disturbing. They, they, they always use the most extreme rhetoric. That, that, that's a tactic that he's using here. Uh, he's employing extreme rhetoric. I don't know if it's significant. I don't know if it isn't. He but, didn't say where it came Robbie, from. He didn't say what it was about. He didn't even say whether these emails were sent or received by Hillary Clinton. And furthermore, uh, another hypothetical that's out there is that these are duplicates that have already been released. And another theory out there, oh, you mean a, a, a conspiracy theory? Oh, well, no, it's not a conspiracy theory because it's not about any specific individuals engaging in any sort of criminal conspiracy. It's just a theory that we have that maybe these are the same emails and they're being released again. So it's, isn't it convenient how when anyone else has a theory, they allege, oh, conspiracy theorists, stop, oh, blah, 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 you're crazy. But when it suits their favor... Well, we have a theory that it may be this, so you you know you better reserve judgment for us because it may be this. We have a theory. We have a theory, guys. What a load of nonsense. 
And then and then he shifts the uh, burden of responsibility on to Comey with, with that whole little speech. Oh, we're not sure what's in this, and he's just not being specific, so he needs to get the information out there fast. It's his responsibility, because he's, he's informing us, but not with too many specifics. You can't always get specifics instantly, but when people do have information, they will give it to you. When I wanted to call for information for the certain shootings that have happened in our country, I've been able to get the information pretty quickly from the police department's information departments. Because if they do have it, they have an obligation to give it out in most cases where it's not an active investigation. It, 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 it depends on some circumstances, but I'm kind of getting away, getting away from the point. What, what he's doing here is just ridiculous, um, trying to shift the burden of responsibility and using his other just nefarious tactics. And there's going to be more. There, there are more to come. We need all the information and director. But Robbie, Cole I want to get I wanna make fast. one more point about this letter. You say it was, it was it's hype. Uh, Comey sent the letter about 1 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday. Your campaign chairman, John Podesta, put out a statement at 3.45 p.m. in which he's made exactly the same charge that this hit letter had been sent just to the Republicans, not to the Democrats. Three hours and 15 minutes later, Hillary Clinton makes the same charge. This was a talking point of your campaign, and frankly, it was a dishonest talking point. See right there, he get, he calls them out. He said, you guys made this into a talking point, and it was dishonest. And look at how he closes his eyes as he's smiling there like, oh, jeez, now i got to find an answer for this and cover for this one, too. Oh, my goodness, this is ridiculous. Like, you can just tell by the way that he's sitting there. Oh, my gosh, it's like this guy's such a weasel. He's such a weasel. Oh, my goodness. Like, ah, oh, like looking at him. Ah, oh, he's such a fake weasel man. And that H on his jacket, it's like, wow, dude, you should feel ashamed of yourself. You're the, you're pathetic. You're pathetic. All right, so let's let's see how he defends um, this charge, this rightful charge that they used it as a dishonest talking point. Chris, if your question is whether Democratic uh, leaders were CC'd on that letter, the answer is absolutely yes. No, that's not his question. See what he did right there is redirect the question. If your question is, no, it's not my question, I'll stop him right there. I, I would say, you're using this as a dishonest talking point. You guys pretended, and you continued on with pretending until you got caught, and now you're stopping. But in, when you could, you tried using it as a dishonest talking point. And, but, oh, no, see, if your question is something different, then yes, absolutely. And, and, all right, I'll, I'll let him continue. What's disturbing about this, again... Oh, see... Once again, the, the victim narrative, what's disturbing, what's disturbing, oh, you should be disturbed, you should be disturbed. He's telling you how to feel, and, and you shouldn't feel that way because it's not disturbing. He's trying to plant, you know, false emotions into you. It's garbage. This guy's a manipulator, and you should not be manipulated by fools like this. Is that a three-paragraph letter? Oh, once again, diminishing, diminishing. Oh, a three-paragraph letter. Oh, how could it even be a good letter if it's only three paragraphs? Like, who even knows? They always, they always try to use the size of writings against you, whether it's small or large, when it comes to people wanting to either read it or not read it. Oh, I'm not going to read that. That's a massive text. That's a wall of text. That's a brick wall of text. Oh, my, there's just a page of words. Page of words. Uh, yeah, a page of words, you mean a book? You stupid idiot, you stupid idiot, you can't read a book? You dumb moron, you can't pick up a book and read 50,000 words because you're an idiot? Oh, five paragraphs, that's too long. Yeah, because you're an idiot. With no information whatsoever. See, oh, with no information whatsoever. Diminishing about what the FBI is talking about was sent uh, to uh, to the individuals named on the letter. Uh, it took uh, Jason Chaffetz about, I don't know, 15 seconds to leak that out to the press. I'm not following. I don't know why that's important. What is he getting at? And now your, all your interviews this morning have been full of hypotheticals. Oh, see, now, now's the attack. Now's the attack. All, all of them are hypothetical. And conjectures. Oh, conjecture. Conjecture. Uh, Director Comey owes it to the American people. Oh, uh, once again, shifting the burden, just as he did it before. Director Comey owes it to the people. Releasing this just a matter of days before the election to provide all the information. That's what we're asking. Just get all of it out there, and the voters can judge for themselves. We think the voters actually want to hear about what these two candidates are going to do to make a difference in their lives. 
Oh, now now he's going to the um, distraction thing. Oh, so you, you guys need to stop with the distractionary tactics. We're trying to actually do real work and get the American people to uh, talk about the issues. That's why we constantly make fa you know false claims and bring up sex accusations and other nonsense that has no basis in uh, you know political uh, politics. Not more relitigating uh, of this email, and, and we recognize uh, that the director was under tremendous pressure from Donald Trump. Oh, now now it's the victim narrative. Oh, he was under pressure from Donald Trump. He's being pressured and Republican leaders. Oh, and Republican leaders. Those evil Republican leaders that we always cast aspergences on. Those evil Republican leaders that we always blame for everything. Uh, and, and, and now he's and, under tremendous pressure from your side. Boom, roasted. Great way to end it. Now he's under tremendous pressure from your side. Oh yeah, you guys can call out other people when they're pressuring him, but then, you know, when he's doing things that might go against uh, your favorability, all pressure's on from you, hypocrites. So, it was a pretty uh, brief one. I think I can leave it at that. Um, the tactics used by that weasel were pretty simple. Tried deflecting, tried dismissing, tried playing the victim card, um, tried turning it around as if, uh, you know, they're the ones that are making something out of nothing. So, you can see that with these Democrats and these liberals, most often times, it's just dirty tactics and tricks trying to hide the truth because the truth damages them as you clearly saw with his half-truth defense of she read the first page yeah we know she read the first page she probably read the second page too and then pretended that she didn't and made a statement like they're just sending those republicans and then when she's caught they're like oh oh geez actually it was on the second page oh we admit it now guys sorry Sorry, we just had this false talking point working in our favor because we'll do anything to get people on our side with especially false narratives. So this guy's a weasel. The Clinton campaign is terrible. Hillary Clinton is a terrorist. She's a criminal. She's going to be indicted, and uh, Trump's going to be president. So I hope you learn a little bit from this, uh, and you won't fall prey to the tactics that these people use, the rhetoric devices they try to trip and trap you up with. So... Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, subscribe. Subscribe to my Patreon and donate. Just give me a dollar a month. It's not a lot of money. And uh, I'll make way more of these videos once again. So, back in the saddle here, uh, direct from the studio, as you can see. And uh, I'll come at it. I think I'm just going to go with this more simple format more often because uh, green screening is setting up that thing. Oh, gosh. I'll use it when I have. 9-11 footage to play in the background more often, so I'm going to end with uh, something cool, so yeah, peace out guys, check you next time All of this happened under Hillary Clinton's watch it would actually be uh, Secretary Clinton in his first television interview since criminal charges were dropped against him, licensed arms dealer Mark Turry says the Obama administration, with the cooperation of Hillary Clinton's State Department, tried and failed to make him the fall guy for a 2011 covert weapons program to arm Libyan rebels that spun out of control. I would say 100% I was victimized to somehow discredit me, uh, throw me under the bus, you know, do whatever it took to protect their... Um, you know, next presidential candidate.